Stratford Ice Church of God, in my opinion, in the opinion of many others, the greatest church in the entire world. We're so thankful you decided to be here with us today. And uh, you may have known if you were here last week, Pastor May announcement, he is not going to be here today. But it's okay. He's on a cruise. While we're here in 50 degree weather, he is out in the Bahamas somewhere getting his tan on. So I told him we would make sure to let people know that he loves you. And uh, obviously he can't be here, but he wishes he could. We have a special guest in the next service, which is Gordon Moat. And if you are able to, I highly, highly recommend you to come back and be part of that service. He came about a year, year and a half ago on a Sunday night, and it was absolutely phenomenal. He is gifted. He is talented. Uh, but more important, he is anointed. And the Lord just blesses and uses him mightily. So we want to recommend that you come back in that service. And then lastly, I want to let you know that next Sunday, say next Sunday. Good effort. Next Sunday, starting at 1045, and I believe it may even be 830, I have to check. Uh, Brother Lane Sargent will be with us next Sunday, and we will be having revival from Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. So please come back next week. I want to let you know and invite as many friends and family as you can. It's going to be a wonderful time. If, how many of y'all have been here and heard uh, Brother Lane Sargent before? He's amazing. Uh, that Sunday night, we'll be having what we call the Region 8 Revival. Uh, as you know, our pastor is a pastor. He's the elder of over 23 churches in our area. And those churches will be coming here that night to have a regional rally of a revival. And it's just going to be a wonderful time of the Lord. So I want to give you a heads up of that. Uh, for any other information, you can check your bulletins. And if this is your first time, we want you to know you are welcome. You are a special guest. Let's go shake someone's hands. Welcome to Stratford Heights. This joy that I have Words and give to me This joy that I have The world did give it to me This joy that I have The world did give it to me The world did give it and the world can't take it away This joy that I have This joy the world did give it to me Oh, this joy that I have The world did 
you just for a moment raise your hands to the Lord this morning? Would you just praise Him and honor Him? Just say your own words to Him this morning. Just cry out your own words to Him. Father, we love you so much. God, we are desperate for you not of a program, not of all the things the world offers, but God, you're the one that truly fulfills. And we lift our hands to you this morning, God, and give an adoration to you and praise and worship and honor and glory to you, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. God, we love you so much this morning. God, we are desperate, desperate for your word, desperate for your presence, desperate for your touch. God, you are faithful and you are awesome and holy and mighty. And you deserve glory and you deserve the honor and all the praise. And we give it to you this morning, King of kings and Lord of lords. God, we love you with all of our heart this morning. And we worship you. We take time. We stop in the middle of the worship and just stop. And just tell you how much we desperately need you. And how much we love you. You're the greatest thing in this world. Though many reject you and many turn from you and many ignore you, God, you yet are still there to love and to care for. For those that have rejected you, you are still there. For us who are followers and believers, God, you are right there for us. We love you with everything in us this morning, and we give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, we love you, Lord. So many people, when they first get saved or when they spend time after salvation or learning how to how to pray how to worship you may be like i am and you're just not the best of singers that's not what worship is worship is just denying ourself and honoring him and putting him first many times we just get in a rush to go to the next thing or because we're used to that sometimes it's good just to stop and just say god i can't sing it but I can tell you with everything in me, I love you. I love you more than I love myself. I love you more than a person I'm standing next to. I love you more than anything this world has to offer. Lord, we love you this morning. We thank you. This morning, if you have a special need, if you would, would you step out from where you are and allow us to pray with you this morning? The presence of the Lord is here. If you have a special need, we want to agree with you in prayer this morning. And maybe you don't want to step out, but you have an unspoken. You want to raise your hand and say, Lord, you know exactly what it is in my life that I need this morning. We want to agree with you in prayer. We want to continue to pray for Bobby Jackson. Uh, he's in the hospital. Uh, he, his surgery went well. He is getting better. Uh, but we want to continue to lift him up in prayer. And then uh, all the other needs you'll see in the bulletin, the names. If you have a special need or something like that, if you want, you can contact the office and put your name in that bulletin, and we'll together agree in prayer for you. But let's go before the Lord this morning. God, we love you. We thank you that, Lord, you are real, and that, God, you decide to show up into a service and touch your people and minister to the needs that we have. And, Lord, we give them to you, that each and every single person that has a need, each and every single person that raised their hand this morning. Lord, you know exactly where they're at in their life. I know there can be millions of people, God, in this state and in this country and God and billions of people in this world Lord but you know each and every one of us and you call us by name and you know where each and every one of us are at and all of our needs God you're powerful and you're mighty and nothing is too hard for you nothing is impossible with you and Lord we ask that this morning that you minister to each and every single man and woman that stands in this place and the needs that they have God bless their families bless the children bless the parents the siblings, lower those that are out in a world that are lost, that are dying, that are hurting. We ask that, God, that you speak to them. Lord, those that are needing you to minister to them financially and give them favor at work, or maybe it's a new job, you know what the need is, and we ask that you go before us and minister to the needs. And God, those that are needing peace, those that are needing rest, those that are needing to have sleep again, God, we ask that you minister to them this morning. God, and just remind them that, Lord, it may be difficult times and that though things may come against us and it may be hard you are faithful and you are there right now to give peace and reassurance that Lord nothing is too hard for you and you are right here right now to minister to your people to bring miracles and healing and we trust you and we look to you in Jesus wonderful name we pray in Jesus name in Jesus name you can be seated this morning 
As we prepare for the offering, I do want to remind you as we do every early morning and every mid-morning service, all of the loose offering. In other words, all the money that you may give this morning that's not designated to tithes or designated to something specific, uh, they go to foreign missions. And we support foreign missions very heavily in this church. As well, as you know, if you look in the foyer anywhere in the church, you know that we are in a building uh, building stage. And um, we're excited. God is doing some wonderful, wonderful things in our church. We're growing. People are being saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. People are being prepared and sent out for ministry. And God is just doing a wonderful work in discipling the people in this community. And we want to continue in doing so. And if you, as we've said almost every week, you'll hear us say about how packed we are, not just in the mid-morning service, but every single night you can pull in. You'll just see cars. I remember about five years ago when I first came, you could come on any night other than Tuesday and Wednesday, and there'd be no cars. doesn't matter what night you show up now or you drive by on Brill, there's cars in this parking lot nonstop. And it's good. We're busy, uh, but we're busy for the Lord. And so we want to ask that you continue in your giving and uh, preparing uh, for us to be able to, to build this building. And for some people, uh, you may have already started pledging and started giving, but you haven't filled out a card. I'm going to ask, if you would, please make sure that if you've made a decision that you're going to give for the next 36 months, whether it's $10, $5, $25, whatever you can give comfortably per week for the next 36 months, uh, we ask that you fill that card out. Uh, the problem is a lot of people are saying, hey, I, I've done it. I'm, I'm, I'm giving. We don't know that. And so when we go to the bank, we're just taking what we have on form, on paper. So please fill one of those out so we know. And know that what you're doing is you're giving for what God is sending us to do for the future here in this church. We're so impacted by today. And what we need to always remember is tomorrow. God's preparing us for tomorrow. So if you would this morning continue in worship. We talk about that. We're not just giving because someone in front of a stage is asked. We're giving because we love him, and that's what he asked of us this morning. Amen? Lord, we love you so much. We thank you for your faithfulness, and God, and your greatness. Lord, we pray and ask that you bless the giver this morning and continue as you have given us a vision for the future, given us a vision for this new building. Lord, we ask that you just continue to bring in those people that are going to give to help us with this vision that you have given us, not of a man, but what you've given us. Lord, we ask that you lead us, you guide us, and God, for those that are out in the field in the foreign missions, Lord, we ask that, God, that you'll bless them and anoint those people that are out working and winning the lost. God, we pray for them. We give, but most of all, we ask that you anoint them and continue to anoint this church for the work that you're doing. We love you so much, and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. You are my source of life. I can't be left behind. No one else will do. I put my trust in you. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. You are my source of life. I need.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you would, stand with me for the reading of God's Word. Today we're going to John chapter 5, starting in verse 2 through verse 9. It says this, And there is at Jerusalem, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue... I don't, for some reason, I always want to say this the wrong way, but I have no idea why. Uh, Bethesda, uh, Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of the blind, the halt, the withered, waiting for the, water, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever would be the first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever diseased him, what, whatever disease he had. At a, and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years and Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been there a, a, and knew now a long time in that case he saith unto him wilt, wilt thou be made whole the impotent man answered him sir I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool but while I'm coming another steppeth down before me Jesus said unto him, Arise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Let's pray. Ask God to bless his word. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and we honor you today and we praise you. Lord, we're, we're confident in you and in your love and in your care for us. Lord, that you know exactly where we're at, whatever the situation is that we face today, whatever we're looking at, Lord, regardless of how the world sees it or, or maybe even at times how we see it, Lord, you see the whole story. Lord, we pray today, Lord, that you would anoint your word and that you would speak to us and that you would deal with us today, Lord, as we give you all the glory and all the praise, Lord, have your way. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you may be seated. We do, at the end of our service, we do want to remember, uh, as we close in prayer today, we do want to remember another need that we have here at our church this past week. Our, uh, one of our sisters, Nancy Carroll, went home to be with the Lord, and uh, her funeral will be here tomorrow, and uh, we just want to pray for their family. Uh, and just ask God to be with them. And their whole family has been connected with us for a long time. So we want to pray for them uh, here at the end of the service. But I want to get into uh, the Word today. It's kind of a different day. Um, the pastor is on the cruise, but so is Gary. Gary's on the cruise as well. That's why he was not here. It's actually a, a church-wide cruise that they've been working on. This is, a, I believe, the third year in a row that they've went. And we've got, I don't even know how many people that are out there. But they're having church on the on the high seas today. And we're... Like Brad said, we're having church in the cold, so hallelujah. But anyhow, I want to talk to you today about perspective. And uh, just in a nutshell, like my small definition of perspective is just how we look at life. Each one of us have a particular way that we view the world. You know, there's truth, there's reality, but we all see things differently. I kind of look at it like this. I've got a few examples. When there's a drought, one guy will say, you know, there's a drought, my yard's almost dead. But then at the same time, another guy will say, awesome, we're having a drought, my yard's dead. I don't have to worry about mowing all summer. <laughs> In the same way, somebody, you know, there's optimists and there's the pessimists that look at life. You know, one person says, they wake up in the morning, and they say, wow, I've got another day to live. And another person will wake up and be like, okay, I got one last day to live. You know, they look at the same thing two different ways. It's classic glass half full and glass half empty. We all see life and the world through our own perspective, through the, what has happened in our life, maybe different situations that shape us and mold us, and we get this outlook on life that, that maybe our circumstances have given us and what we perceive as reality. And what we, what we see as reality is usually how we act in our life, regardless of, you know, somebody might say that things are different than what they are, but 
But, you know, we'll say, well, our experience or things that we've been around, you know, tell me that life is like this. So we all got different perspectives. So I, there's probably 50 people in the, in the room right now, and everybody looks at things differently. Nobody looks at things exactly the same way. But I wanted you to, to get this perspective, this thought about perspective in your mind, because it affects everything that we do in our life. It affects everything we see and how we act and how we live. There's always... You know, we look through our own, you know, our own glasses, our own way of looking at life. We have our own tilt on things. So we have to understand that we, that we have a different perspective. But what I want to tell you today is sometimes, and unfortunately a lot in our circles, we kind of get in a place where we look at the world like the world looks at it. And we kind of react like how the world reacts. And what we see is is things that we interpret as reality, but they're not exactly reality. You know, we as Christians, we have truth that comes through the Bible and God that deals with us and shows us his word and shows us reality and truth for what it really is. But sometimes in situations and circumstances, we get caught up in seeing things on the other side. We get see caught up seeing things in a negative way, maybe like the world would see them. Sometimes... You know, I had some time, one time I sat down with uh, somebody one time and we talked about their situation that they were in and, and I was just really pumped. I felt God and, you know, they had shared situations with me and, and I responded back and I, I was just like, well, but let's look at what the Word says. Let's stand on what this truth says. And, you know, I kind of pointed out the Word and, you know, trusting God and stuff like that. And the person made a, a really profound statement they said, well, well, that's all great, but then I get back to reality. And when I get back to reality, you know, all that stuff kind of goes out the window. And I stopped for a moment, and it just struck me. You know, the Lord dealt with me and pointed out very closely to me that what we, you know, somebody would say, well, I'm getting back to reality. But the truth is that God's word is the truth, that it is the reality. That regardless of what we see and how the world thinks and acts and what they try to tell us is the truth, the truth comes back to this word. And reality comes back to this word of what the truth is. So we have to get a perspective on things and look through things through the reality of who God is and through his word and stand on what that says regardless of what the situation might call. And sometimes, like I said, it's very hard, whatever the situation is, that we get to looking at things in ways that are kind of like the world. Maybe not as hopeful as they should be and not as full as promise and, and potential as what the word would give us. There's so many times that we look at things and see things like the world does. But getting back to our perspective... There's a scripture, Philippians 2 and 5, that says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ. There's a way to get a new perspective, to look at God and look at the reality of who he is and focus in on him and, and let him change our thinking. Sometimes I believe we, you know, the reality of what the doctor says, the report that he gives, yes, they've run the test, they've seen what it all says, but that's not the whole truth. At times, that's not the whole truth, and that's not the whole story. But reality is actually a, a little something different. And, and regardless of maybe the finances look a certain way, and, and you've put out 100 resumes, so you just kind of look at things as, well, the reality is I'm not getting a job. But that's not where the truth lies. But when we stand on God's word and trust what it says, it's completely different at times than what we would ever think it is. There's so many times in our life that we, we get in situations and places where we just think, man, I, I need an answer. I need some kind of direction. I need some kind of hope in this situation. We just look at it like, I don't see it. But in reality, it's, it's there all along, that hope that we have. And it comes down to, in some respects, it comes down to our perspective, how we really look at things. Now, to do us great at, at times to step back and just really get in a place where we stop focusing on the situation or whatever the problem is and look, look into Christ and let him deal with us and let him change our mind. Let's stand on truth and let it shape who we are and change the way we think. Regardless of the way the situation looks, let's stand on the word of Christ. It's all about perspective. It's all about 
the way that we see things. Today, when we change our perspective, when it's not based on solely on these things out here that we see, on, you know, what some may interpret as, well, this is reality. People out there in the world would say, well, yeah, you got your faith and your Bible and your religious stuff, whatever, but hey, I'm dealing with reality. But I'm telling you, when we step back and we step up and look into Christ and look into who God is and standing on who he is and standing on his word, there's some new stuff that comes for us. I'm telling you, it's in that moment when, when it's not about, you know, all about what's here on this earth, but when it's all about who he is and what he's able to do, there's some other stuff that comes up. All of a sudden, our perspective changes because then there's hope then there's possibility, then there's potential for things to be completely different and changed. And more often than not, what we perceive as the total truth and the whole story or the whole reality of it of, often changes. And there's something different there. There's more to the story. Today, as you face your life and the situations that you're going through, you might have a laundry list of this, this, and this that you're going through. And at times you can get into those things and be so weighed down and so bogged down in them that, that it just seems like there's no hope, there's no answer, there's no direction. But step back and get a new perspective on things and look into God and let him deal with your heart and with your mind and let him show you because there's more to the story often than what we believe. There's so much more going on. I want to share this story with you. And it's a very personal story. It's a little bit of a testimony. And if it's too much about me, I, I apologize. But I'm telling you this story to illustrate my point. A few months ago, my son was born 10 weeks early, Leo. Wonderful kid. I love him. You know, he's awesome. But anyhow, he's born 10 weeks early. We had no idea what was going to happen. You know, we're thinking that he's going to be born somewhere around the time that he should be born. My wife is... You know, one night is complaining, thinks she has kidney stones. All right, we'll go to the hospital. We go to the hospital. We're there running tests forever. It's 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm thinking, well, I better, you know, let somebody know that I'm going to be late to work in the morning. Time marches on, and then they come and say, hey, your wife is sick. I'm standing on one side of my wife on the bed, and the doctor's on the other. Says, hey, you're a lot sicker than we thought you were. I'm like, Okay. Then he's like, you're really, really sick. Talking to my wife, I'm like, okay. He says, if we don't get this baby out, you're going you're gonna to die. I was like, S say what? She's like, yeah, she'll die. In a couple hours, a couple days, she won't last more than, a, more than a week, definitely, if we don't get the baby out. I'm like, you know, I'm pretty blown away at that point. I'm like, huh? Literally. You know how you see people on TV, they put their hands on their cheeks and they're like, are you kidding me? That's exactly what I did. At 10 weeks early, the guy's like, the doctor's like, you're having the baby today. And I was absolutely blown away. But anyhow, went to the hospital, had the baby, the whole story. The, this is the point of my story. Is I, My son is laying in the, the incubator thing, the little plastic box. He's got all this stuff all over him. I can barely, you can barely see him because he's got so many little different things. It's like, you know, the next day after he was born. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to be a good dad. And, you know, it's up to me to pray and pray and pray and make sure he makes it through, make sure that he's healthy. My perspective of things was a little weird. And God was fixing to talk to me and change my perspective on everything. You know, I thought that God was looking at me and it's like, okay, I'm going to put you to the test. You're going to pray and pray and pray, and then I'm going to move and make sure this baby is healed or whatever. So I'm like, you know, I'm thinking that. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do that. But yeah, I looked at him in the box, and I said, you know, God, God touch him or whatever I said. And out of the blue, not, I didn't expect it at all. Out of the blue, God spoke to me, and he said, he said, I'm already there with him. He said, like I've been with you in your life, he said, I'm already there with him. And that just spoke volumes to me. Because even this little baby, a day old, God was saying that, you know, I'm, I'm a youth pastor, I'm a grown man, i got to take care of my wife, i got to take care of hundreds of kids, you know. God's got to help me a lot. 
you know, in you know, the way I look at things, like, man, God's got to help me a lot, but he spoke to me so clearly about how he's been with me through everything that I've been through and every situation I've faced. He said, I'm, I'm there with him already like that. And it just absolutely blew me away. I never considered, you know, I thought, in some respects, I thought, you know, it's all hinging on me. But he spoke to me and said what he was doing, and I, it took me back. I was just like, are you kidding me? To see and understand how much God loves and how much he cares far beyond outside even dad even outside of what what my emotions what my love could do he loved him so much more he changed my perspective about things in a second and I was just absolutely amazed God sees more than we could ever see God is more than I believe that that maybe we could ever experience I don't know he is amazing and he is wonderful he sees your situation he sees where you're at today he sees the bigger picture, and what we see is just maybe in the narrow scope of things, he sees in a broad perspective. He loves us. He cares for us today. It's, it's for us in this moment, in this time, to look at things and, and say, God, okay, I know that you love me. I know that you care for me. The situations that I'm in today, God, where are you at in those things? Because it's, there's so potentially so much more to what's going on. Let's get back to our story that, that we started out with the pool of Bethesda I think in so many in so many ways this story about the guy at the pool of Bethesda is is a is a story and an illustration that that is in the Bible strictly you know for us when we're in those hard times we're in those bad times if you look at if you look at this story there's so many times that we're in the same place that that this guy is he, he has this infirmity, and he sees this situation through his own perspective. I mean, just think about this. The, the, the story says that there was a lot of people there at the pool of Bethesda, and he was just a face in the crowd. I'm sure there's tons of times that, you know, when those waters were troubled and people got up and, you know, somebody ran and jumped in. I believe that he thought, why not me? It's easy for us in situations to get in a place where we see other people being blessed and we see other things working out for other people. But when we're in the middle of a situation, we're like, why not me? Where's my miracle? I believe this guy dealt with it, and I believe God was pointing that out to show us that he understands where we're at. And I believe also that the man was probably very lonely. It, when Jesus asked him about being healed, he said, I don't have nobody to help me get in. The, I don't have nobody to help me get in. With all those people there, with a crowd of people, there was nobody else to help him get in. I believe he's lonely. There's many times when we face situations that we're all alone. And we feel like, man, nobody really understands. Nobody is really there like I need him to be. And the third thing is, I'm sure he thought at times that it would never get any better. For 38 years, he dealt with this issue. The, the word says, for 38 years, he dealt with this issue. I'm sure that there were times when he just almost would just give up and say, well, this is, this is life. This is how it is. I'm just stuck here in this situation, almost hopeless. And I'm sure there's times that we feel that way in our situations that we have. He only saw, and, and check this out, this is, this is, this is something that, that I want us to see. His, his situation that he was in, he seen the solution only one way. He had thought about it probably a million times. Okay, the waters are troubled. If I could just get in there, I'm going to be healed. That's, that's it. That's the solution. A, B, and C. All right, I'm just waiting. A, B, and C. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. And sometimes we can process problems and issues over and over and over and over a million times in our heads, and we'll think, okay, I've only got this solution, or I've only got this solution. But when God comes on the scene, when Jesus shows up, there's, there's many times there's other options. There's other things that we didn't know about because we didn't have his perspective. But there's other things about the situation that God can move in and God can do. He's wonderful. He's a miracle worker. And, and just think about this. I take this kind of funny. You know, Jesus walks up to him. He says, you know, basically he says, do you want to be healed? And the man responds and he says, yeah, I want to be healed. I want to jump in the water. You know, I want to get in the water, but nobody will help me. And in my mind, the first thing I think of 
you know, in my humanity, I guess. Looking at this story, I have this thought in my head that Jesus was thinking, well, I didn't ask you, you know, about the water. I said, do you want to be healed? You know, I'm not, I'm not asking you about that. But it, it's funny because there's a difference. There's a new option. There's something that he never thought about. Perspective said it only had to be this way, but in reality, there was more to the situation. And it's so awesome for you. God has the power to move in the situation that you face today. The hopeless place that maybe you find yourself at or the answer that you need. God is there. He loves you. He cares for you so incredibly. And look at it this way. Out of the crowd of people, it says Jesus was coming by Jerusalem. And out of the crowd of people, Jesus zeroed in on this one guy. That he wasn't forgotten in the crowd. And Jesus didn't go and look and say, oh, I'm, I'm going to do somebody else. I'm not going to pick this guy. You know, I'm going to make him suffer. Jesus looked at him and went to this one man and had been there for 38 years and picked him out of the crowd. Today, if you feel like lonely, forgotten, and hopeless in a situation, I believe God is picking you out of the crowd, that he loves you and that he cares for you. And he has so much wonderful work for us and so much love and so much care for us. He is absolutely amazing. The different perspective on things is God's perspective for our life. And, and I would challenge us. The, the cool thing about it is is that when God shows up, he changes things. He does things that, that, that revolutionize things. He just spoke the words to this man. Can you imagine the, the joy that overtook this man when, when he said, he says, rise up and, and be healed, however he says it. Can you imagine the joy that the answer was finally there, that the healing was finally taking place after 38 years? You know, when God moves in your life, he changes things. The, the hopeless and the, the things that seem like they're absolutely not going to work out, when he moves, when he works, that hope becomes your victory. That, that deliverance becomes alive inside of you and he touches us and changes us. You know, those deep thoughts we have in the back of our mind, you know, about, well, maybe it'll get better. And that would be so awesome if it happened this way and deliverance was mine. That reality was becoming his at that moment. And I'm telling you, that reality is here for you today. That in him, in Christ, there is victory and there is deliverance. Through him and through his work, he brings the changes inside of us. He brings the changes in, in our life. And it's so wonderful and so awesome. A lot of times if we're looking through our own eyes, looking through humanity, things don't change. But I'm telling you, in God, things change and everything is made new and everything is made fresh. And I believe that God is working towards those times when he can move and when he can make the deliverance happen for us, make those things a reality. And it's awesome and it's wonderful. But I'm telling you, the greater thing, the more wonderful thing is not necessarily that the man got up and walked, and the greater thing is not necessarily that you get the answer that you've been longing for. That's wonderful. That's awesome. Praise God, a miracle. Everybody will see it. Everybody will know it. I can't even imagine what this guy's response was once he got some feet underneath of him, once he got to celebrate. But just as important as that is, the more important thing, I believe, was looking at his feet, looking at his whole body, was he was able to look at Jesus and say, there's something about you. There's something wonderful about this man that I've never known before. And in the situations that we face and we go through, every time when something happens, there is a new perspective of who God is. There's a new wonderful uh, relationship that grows and grows each time something awesome like this happens. This new perspective of how wonderful he is and how amazing he is. Like that situation I had with my son, I would have never understood how much, how much God loves people, how amazing and how vast he is. If I would have never stood in that moment, in that point of God moving and working, I would have never understood how amazing he is. That before we were born, you know those scriptures that talk about before we were born, those things through, through my son, those things have come alive. God had a plan for my son long before I ever realized it or knew it. It reminds me of, of 
where John the Baptist was named and you know God dealt with his parents and said this is going to be his name there was a plan laid out for his life even before he was born and for all of us that just gave me a new perspective on man how much does God love us how much does he care for us so in the situation that you find yourself in today number one is I believe that there's an answer there's some kind of solution. There's some kind of thing that God is working and he's doing. So it's time for us to focus in again and say, hey, I, I know I've, I've run this situation over and over again in my mind a million times. Okay, uh, you, understand, you know it. But it's time to say, okay, I'm going to lay this thing down again. And I'm going to take and put my focus on God. And I'm going to love him and honor him with everything I am. Because I believe that God's got an answer and he's going to bring that to you. But not only in that, but I believe he's going to speak to you and deal with your heart and you're going to see him in a way that's different than you've ever seen him before. That you're going to be able to look at him and trust him and stand on what he is doing and who he is in a way like you never have before. It's the work of God in our lives. He's awesome and he's wonderful and he's amazing. I believe that he's here for you today. If you would all stand with me. It's about our perspective. It's about our perspective. Today, just as many different perspectives of, uh, as I've said there are, there's just as many different situations that everybody's facing something. Everybody's going through something. Maybe you've thought about, maybe it's a healing situation, finances, maybe somebody that, that you, around you that needs salvation. Whatever the situation is, let's make sure we have God's perspective. I would challenge you today that, that as we close in prayer, that whatever it is, whatever you're faced with today, that you will say, God, I trust you. I trust you. And I'll lay this thing down before you and I give it to you. In and of myself, it might look hopeless, so I might not be able to figure out the answer, but God, you have the answer. I challenge you to lay it down. And second is this, God what are you trying to show me about who you are? What wonderful thing are you unveiling to me? Because I know that you are. With every head bowed and every eye closed, we're going to pray here in just a second. But if there's anybody that needs Jesus in their life, you need salvation. God loved you so much. Before, the Bible says that even before we were Christians, even before we were born, Jesus died for our sins. It was planned that Jesus would die for our sins that he would pay a price for us, that we were worth that much, that he loved us that much, that he cares for us that much. God sent his son Jesus to die for our sins so that we could have eternal life and have God in our life. If you are somebody today that, that doesn't have a relationship with, with God, you need to ask Jesus in your heart to forgive you of your sins. If that's you, real quick, I'd ask you to put your hand up, put it back down so we know that we're praying with you. We want to give whoever needs the opportunity to have that opportunity. Is that you? All right. We're going to pray about these two things that we mentioned. We're going to ask God to have his way. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we praise you and we honor you. Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, for the situation even that we find ourselves in today. Lord, because we know that your hope and your victory is on the way. Lord, there's an answer that's coming from you. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to see the truth and to see like you see. Lord, and to trust you and to lay down the situation that's in our life. Lord, this weight that's on us, Lord, we put it at your feet. Lord, we've carried it around long enough. We lay it down before you. Lord, we trust you and we give it to you. Lord, we understand that there is more to the story than just what we understand. We trust you with it. We pray that you would move, bring deliverance, bring salvation, whatever the answer is, Lord, we pray that you would bring it. And then, Lord, in that, in that, we pray that we understand and we see full and clear who you are. And, Lord, the new thing that you're wanting to show us about you, Lord, we pray that you would show us. The Lord, we want to grow in you. We want to share this relationship with you, this life with you like we never have before. Lord, let your mind be our mind. Lord, shape us and mold us and help us to stand on the truth, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. We appreciate you. We love you. Come back at 1045. We are going to pray one more.